I want one. No. I had a dream about it. It was so real. You don't need that. This is one of the most ridiculous motherboards that ever exists. It's actually impossible. This should not exist. What they're doing in there is actually illegal. And I'm not sure AMD even knows that this is happening because it's bad, but very good for us. And we've seen a lot of AI mentioned everywhere. AI this, AI that, but this, is an actual AI motherboard. Let's find out what's going on. This part of the video is brought to you by Trix Panorama, the world's first CPU cooler with curved L-shaped AMOLED screen. It's not just for good looks though, the cooling is amazing. Go check out our video how we were able to overclock the Intel Core Ultra 9 285K with this exact cooler and that was not even maxing the cooling performance go check out our hands-on and cooling performance with the panorama in the video description below this is the trx50 ai top series motherboard remember when we checked out the ryzen 7000 series threadrippers this is perfect for that but actually not perfect for that because you need a better one i'll tell you in a minute oh my goodness that's so heavy hmm They've got some SATA cables and these are really nice SATA cables. Look at that. They're braided, four of them. Then we've got a display port cable, a small one that you can put on the motherboard or get, you know, USB-C video output from your GPU if you wanted to. A decibel sensor or a little microphone, basically. Temperature sensor and another temperature sensor. So this little cable will allow you to have two power supplies. So how, how does that work? So usually you will plug your power supply, you know, this is familiar cable too, onto the motherboard. And then when you press the power button, the motherboard will wake the power supply kind of up and say, come on, send me all the juice you want. But because this motherboard has so many different connectors, you might need two power supplies to actually supply all the power to this power supply. And for that reason, there's another one over here. So even though you have one ATX power connector for your motherboard, you can plug another power supply in here to supply, for example, GPU power. And then with one press of a button, both of the power supplies will wake up. Front panel connector, the G connector. Then we've got a Wi-Fi antenna. Oh my goodness, this motherboard is absolutely massive. Oh, it's so heavy. Oh my goodness. This is X870E Aorus Master. And when I'm gonna put this motherboard on top of this, okay, have a look how much extra there is on this motherboard. This old bit is extra. It's so wide. I mean, E-ATX sometimes goes like this much. The previous Aorus Master Extreme or whatever, they used to go like something like that. But th this is like so wide, okay? Not a lot of cases support that wide motherboards. And oh boy, is there a lot of things going on in here. Firstly, you've got the VRM design and power delivery. So basically you need a lot of and clean juice for your CPU socket, because if you install one of these, it's gonna take 350 watts like at all times. So you want good power delivery for this. And the cooling for these VRMs is actually here. The interesting thing is this bit here is like dented down. Can you see how this is flat? on this side, but then on that side, there's like a little curve that goes all the way around. You can see it, especially from this angle. When you look in there, there's a curve on this, but not over here. Then we have eight dim slots on TRX 50, and this is the bit that should not exist. Okay. Remember this motherboard has the TRX50 and then the WRX90 different boards. One of them is supposed to be for Threadripper Pro and then one of them for Threadripper. But Gigabyte's like overclocked the TRX50 or just thought we'll just use that chipset or actually maybe both of them can do both, which results that this TRX50 can actually have eight channels as well. So this has eight memory slots and when you've got the Threadripper installed, not Threadripper Pro, the Threadripper has quad channel memory. Me memory. <laughs> memory. The usual Ryzen desktop CPUs, you know, the prosumer ones or consumer ones, will have just dual channel memory, but for slots. So what it will do is it slots the two channels into like 
two blocks so you can have kind of two dims per channel if that makes sense in here this is not exactly how this works but i'm wondering can it work like that because the Threadripper supports quad channel memory. So they're telling you on the motherboard to use like every other slot. Okay, certain slots for the quad channel memory. But what if you fill all of them on Threadripper? Will you still get split channels, you know, on your Threadripper? Because in total, this supports two terabytes of DDR5 RDIM. Ridiculous. I could run the whole operating system on just RAM. Right, it opened like a Merc door, like a G-Wagon. There we go, the beautiful socket of STR5. Should we install the CPU? Well, let's do it. Pull that out, make sure it does slide onto there. It pops down, making sure, yes, we're in, we're in. And then we just pop it down. Okay, that goes down. And when we close it, one, two, three. Interesting, you have to put some pressure on, on the first screw because it's not going to bite onto the threads. A $5,000 CPU is installed. So this supports the pro and non-pro CPUs of Ryzen 7000. Hopefully the 9000 Threadrippers are going to come out soon as well. Let's look at the motherboard headers because there is a lot going on and you get a lot. Well, you're paying a lot for this as well. I mean, I dare you to check out the pricing in the video description below because um, it's very expensive and I want to know how expensive this is for you wherever you're watching this from. So let me know what it says. So there is one PCIe 8 pin connector there that's blocked off, which means that you don't require this to actually turn the motherboard on. You can use it to send more juice for the motherboard or some of the PCA slots. Because if you know, the PCA slots can deliver up to 75 watts power through the actual slot. Now, usually you don't put all of the GPUs in there. You know, on a normal motherboard, you maybe have one or two, so extra 150. Here, we have extra 300 watts of power that can be delivered through the PCIe lanes, which is ridiculous. So that's why you might need more, but you should still have enough what you have in here. Then we have one CPU or EPS 8 pin connector. There is a tiny uh, MOSFET fan header there that goes onto that fan in there. And then you'll see there's another one on this side here for these two fans. Then we've got some fan headers. The CPU optional and CPU fan header. All of the fan headers on this motherboard are two amperes, 12 volts, which means 24 watts. Plenty of whatever you're gonna be doing with it. Then another CPU EPS header, another PCIe header that's blocked off. That's eight pin there as well. Then moving down here, we have one five volt ARGB, then 12 volt ARGB, and then a temperature sensor in there, as well as a little fan header. Then we have a debug LED and a little reset switch that's down there, that tiny guy, that's a reset one. And then a power switch right over there. 24 pin ATX motherboard power supply, two PCIe eight pin connectors to supply choose for the rest of the motherboard. This is a front panel USB type C header, and that is 20 gigabits in speed, 3.2 gen two X2 slot. Here we've got the noise sensor or the microphone that you're gonna plug into there. Four SATA ports, then two front panel USB type A headers, both of them five gigabits in speed, but they also support USB 3.2 Gen 1 and USB 2.0 for the front panel, but it's always backwards compatible, isn't it? Then we've got a clear CMOS headers or prongs in there. If you short them, clear CMOS or clear CMOS switch in there as well. Then we've got front panel connectors just in there. Another temperature header right there. Two system fans or pump fans, another head fan header, and then two more fan headers here. Two USB 2.0 headers. We've got a TPM header and ESPI header here. Another two 5 volt ARGB headers. So if you want to have an AI motherboard that runs all your you know, AI training, you can have RGB all over it. Then front panel audio right over there. This little switch over here will, as you can see, unlock the top GPU. But let's talk about the M.2 and PCIe slots. I like that this is toolless. Just open this, lift it up, and then this big slab of metal comes off. Underneath, you can see thermal pads for four M.2 SSDs. And if you're running Threadripper Pro, so not this guy here, but the Pro version, all of these four M.2s will be Gen 5. But if you're running this guy over here, the non-pro, because you're cheaping out, you're a little cheapskate. Yeah, you can't afford the pro. Yeah. Damn! 
then you don't actually get the fourth slot. He's saying, hey, you're too cheap. I'm not giving you the fourth one because you can't afford it. So the fourth one, see you later. You only get it when you pay more, yeah? Okay, so cash that 10 grand out, get the 96 core Pro CPU, and then you get all four, yeah? Okay? <laughs> All jokes aside, when it's non-Threadripper Pro CPU, then we get only three M.2 SSDs. They're PCI Gen 4 X4 slots. So no Gen 5 M.2 storage when you're running the non-Pro version. It, it should be like, uh, you know, amateur, Threadripper amateur lineup. The nice thing is, these three slots also have a little heatsink underneath if you have two sided, you know, lands on both sides. This one doesn't, even though it's still PCA Gen 5 slot. Now, these four PCA expansion slots, if you have the Ryzen Threadripper Pro CPU, then all of these are going to run PCIe Gen 5 X16 and you've got 16 lanes of PCA LAN, all of them, okay? Full force, just the whole sandwich, okay? All the sauce, BMT, you got it. Then, if you run the amateur version of Threadripper lineup, okay? Then you actually get three PCA Gen 5 X16. So these top will be PCA Gen 5 X16, but then the bottom one is PCA Gen 4 x16 and all of these pca lanes come from the cpu in pro they're all gen 5 in the non-pro the amateur version this is gen 4 and the rest of them are gen 5 so far there's no ai on this motherboard we'll get to that bit on the back of the motherboard you've got a full pack panel metal in there and then all of the standoffs are actually open as well so as you can see these three are atx supports and you can screw in onto all of them but then also the eatx here are on the side so you're gonna need uh, 12 screws and standoffs no back connectors no and interesting if you look down there there is actually no thermal pads on the back of the cpu socket to get some of the heat on the back there no 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 okay now the io we've got the fancy wi-fi connector this guy here you've got wi-fi 7 super fast connectivity plug into there no more screwing then they're not messing around. All of these USB type A ports, 10 gigabits in speed, and you have six of them, just fly them at full speed. Then the LAN ports, two of them, 10 gigabits in speed, cause why mess around? Then we've got two USB four ports, okay? The top one says DP as well, so you can have the display pass through. So if you've got a GPU, you plug the little display port into that one, and then you can have video out through there as well. Otherwise you don't, because there's no integrated graphics on the actual CPU so if you want video output you can get it through the top slot via your GPU and that's what this display port there is for we've got a line out and mic input and then a Q flash plus button just over there for updating your BIOS now then how on earth is this motherboard AI tops well actually I think what Gigabyte has done here is they have built a motherboard system where you can actually train your own AI. Okay, so let's say you want to just compete with Jensen from NVIDIA, with JetGDP, with Copilot Plus, and you want to make your own AI, whatever, large language models, whatever things. Then you need a lot of GPU power to train them. Well, you're still going to give some money to Jensen. And uh, you're going to need a third of a platform to actually make them all run at full speed, which means you're going to give money to Lisa. Did you know that Jensen and Lisa are related? They're like cousins or something like that. So the money goes to the same family, okay? It's ridiculous. The weird thing here is you're going to have to run some kind of a weird um, either riser cable setup because you can't really fit any GPUs in there. I don't know any GPUs that are PCIe X16 that are only two slots deep, okay? I believe even the RTX A6000 and them, they are a little bit deeper than this. So you're not going to be able to fit anything in here because there's one, two slots, okay? This is very, very skinny. So if you want to run four RTX 5090s in here, then you're going to have to figure out some other system how to run them like here stacked up and then your riser cables go into here like that or you just run loads of nvme in here then that's possible as well and interestingly these four nvme slots that you had in there pca gen 5 you can run them in raid zero if you wanted to so potentially you're going to get 20 plus thousand gigabytes not gigabits gigabytes per second speeds probably even close to 30 gigabytes per second 
uh, speeds on these. I don't know why you need that, but you can run them in raid zero. Why not? Because you've already spent that much money. Might as well do it. Those lunatics who want to check it out, I'm going to leave the links in the description below. And the rest of you will will just, uh, you know, drool on this motherboard and then think, what should we do? I guess we're going to see you in the next video. If you want to build yourself the best bank for buck, create a PC though, that's a lot cheaper than this motherboard and, and the CPU here, okay? For that whole CPU, you can build a whole system. Links in the description below. Go check them out. Thanks guys for watching. Bye-bye.